If you follow the herd, you're going to get the same results as the herd. If you do what everyone does, you're going to get the same results as everyone else. Most of you want exceptional lives. You want extraordinary results. You want an extraordinary level of happiness and film and lifestyle. That's why it's imperative you start doing things for yourself and thinking for yourself. If you do what others do, you will end up in a place that you don't want to be. You will live a life of quiet desperation, as Thoreau said. And ultimately, the very thing that you think will matter, other people's opinions, what they say about you, what they don't say, every year that goes by, you realize how preposterous and absurd that entire equation is. Yet, it is what determines 99.99% of human life, what people around them say or think. Or what is their perception of what people may say or may not or may do or may... Like, what? Really? We get this one life. We know that death can happen at any moment. We know that life is precious. We read quotes on Instagram and we like them. Life is short. Live for yourself. Be original. Be unique. Do all these things. And then we wake up and do the same things that everyone else does. And it's a spectrum. We all fall victim to this in some ways. I've gone through consumerist behavior in my life where I've had money and I've spent it and I've wasted it. I've gone, I mean, I've done all the things. Most of us have done many of these things. The key is I've been trying to get better and level up my awareness through knowledge and education and build the exact life that I want. And long ago, I identified that I didn't want to work for someone else. I didn't want to be a debt slave or a slave to a job. I wanted to set my own life, be able to travel when I wanted, have family, have security, have all these things. And I've been working on that for the past 13 years as an entrepreneur. I'm fortunate than many others in the fact that I've found entrepreneurship and that it comes naturally to me and that being an employee is not natural. So I really didn't have a choice in the matter. But regardless of that, the way people spend money, the way they go into debt to buy things they don't need, cars, houses, all this nonsense, even Tesla. Well, you might think it's saving the environment. It probably isn't, or it's at least neutral. And then you're going into debt mostly for the status of it, just so you can signal so that you have to stick to your job to pay for the car payment or whatever. It's like, come on, you're born with no operating manual, no humanness. So what you do is you pick up on the things that are around you, usually from friends and family and immediate environment. Then if you're lucky as an adult, you realize that you need to unlearn a lot of that. The school system, indoctrination camps, even college indoctrination camp <laughs> for the corporations basically, you realize that you have to think for yourself and you have to unlearn a lot of the bad habits and the bad narratives and bad ideas and the insecurity and the shame and the guilt and all those things that are baked into our modern society because our modern society is corporate controlled and the masses fall in line just like sheep. And then they pressure those around them to live exactly the way they are because if you don't live the way the sheep live, the sheep will call you out and then try to manipulate you into falling back in line. Mob mentality 101, the masses do this. And depending on where you grow up, where you live, and the ideals of your family and your community, you're going to be on different ends of this spectrum. That's why poverty itself is so hard to escape because you're born into poverty and everyone around you is poor and they have the poor mindset and they do the poor things. It's really, really, really hard to escape that. Some do, but most don't. But whether you're born into middle class, middle class is a form of slavery. It's drudgery. It's you're a tax and corporate slave. And you go into debt and you buy things, you do all these things because that's what the other middle class do that tell you that's what you need to do to be happy. And then you're not happy. So you're continually stuck in this rut, doing the same thing over and over and over again. Even the rich do this. Then the rich, they need to buy fancy cars and this and that and designer things, constantly pursuing some kind of fulfillment or happiness. And no matter where you fall in the spectrum, if you do what everyone is doing in your group and then even in the larger group, like if you're trying to go from poverty to middle class, middle class trying to go to the rich, the rich are trying to go to the uber rich, and then everyone is pretty much unhappy and miserable the entire time. If you do any of that, no matter where you start, you're not going to live a fulfilling life. You're not going to find happiness. These ideas probably aren't popular for a reason because like it requires major self-reflection. It requires major responsibility for your own life and ownership and self-reliance and self-education. The reason I've done anything in my life as an entrepreneur is because I self-educated. And I'm constantly on that growth mindset perspective. What can I do to improve? How can I improve these things I keep doing? Why do I keep doing this? Like understanding everything I can about myself and being willing to admit that I don't have it figured out. I've never had it figured out. Every year that goes by, I look back and I think, wow, you didn't know shit. I'm do I'll do that in a year from now. And then I'll hopefully do it every year of my life.
And hopefully along the way, the byproduct of that is I will level up my understanding of life. I will level up my understanding of myself and I'll be able to pursue things that matter to me so I can live a long, fulfilling and happy life. That's what we're all after. Yet corporate America has told you that it's about having a nice car, a big house, a mortgage, all these different things, you know, a credit card. It's, it's absurd. It's literally absurd. My call to action is to first wake up and realize that you're doing this. Everything in your life that you do, because everybody else does, you need to analyze. Investing. Well, it's cool to buy stocks right now. But if you buy gold, they say you're an Armageddonist, even though gold is the original money. Uh, cryptocurrency. I would definitely look into that. Getting married. Should you get married? Should you not? Can you just be together? Why do you have to get married? Because everyone else does. Why do you need the government to give approval of your marriage? Now, there are certain tax benefits, but I'm not really going to talk about that right now. And that's a deep, dark rabbit hole. Marriage is modern invention. Modern relationships and the idea of monogamy, these are all creations of modernity. But none of this is natural to our species. Waking up every day, going seeing an office, not natural. Eating fake processed food made by corporations, not natural. Foregoing sleep, being addicted to screens and technology and constantly distracted, not natural. Everything in your life that you do, that most people do, is probably bad for you. Now, you can pick and choose the things you want to do. I use technology in a certain way. I use social media in a certain way. I cook my own food. I do all these different things. I have a car. It's paid off, of course. Right? I have a house. I do have a mortgage, unfortunately, but I wanted to live in the country. Like, there are certain pros and cons to everything, and you have to do a cost-benefit analysis based on your values, your standards. Like, I decided to spend a little bit more to get 10 acres in the country so I can have my own food, so I can have resources and protection, all these different things. And I happened to do that right before a pandemic and right before, uh, you know, mass civil unrest and protesting, and purely on accident. But it's like that stuff's going to happen again in the future. So it will end up being a good investment. Do I like having a mortgage and having debt? No. But it's carefully analyzed. And I didn't do it because I just felt like, oh, I have a little bit of money. Now I need to upgrade my lifestyle. Even though that definitely crept in there. I probably felt like I did need to spend a certain amount and own my own property and do this and that. And I justify it with all these other rational reasons. So it's like... I'm not saying I'm perfect in this regard. Nobody is. But it's about identifying the different variables, the different pitfalls, the different uh, unintended consequences of the different things you do, and then forming a life based on principles while understanding the pitfalls and the costs that you're going to pay. There is a cost benefit to everything. Aristotle called it the golden mean, trying to find what's perfect right in the middle. Too much food, you know what happens. Not enough food, you know what happens. Drink too much water, you can die. Don't drink any water, you die. Too much sleep, they say, I don't know if it's true, but they say it's bad for you or at least makes you feel more tired and groggy. Not enough sleep literally will destroy your health. On and on and on this goes. You'll find a golden mean in life with about everything. How you spend your money, there's a golden mean. Sure, you can spend your money on nice things sometimes and you can enjoy yourself. That's part of life. But you do it too much, you become addicted to it. Then it becomes like any other drug where you have to continually feed yourself more and more and more and the actual effect becomes smaller, smaller, smaller. So to give you a call to action today, like first I got to make you aware of this. I'm going to be talking about a lot, this a lot more. I have a lot of other articles on this and about how to wake up, how to think for yourself, how to be self-educated, et cetera, over at Colin.coach. Make sure you hop on the AM5 newsletter. But the call to action for today is to first start being aware of it. Start questioning everything you do. Ask yourself, have I actually thought about this or researched this? Like, why do I do this thing every day or every week or every month? Why do I say yes to these things I don't really enjoy? Am I trying to please somebody? Do I think they're not going to like me or this or that? Ask yourself everything about everything and then form rules based on principles for your life. The reason you see so many employees get used by their bosses is because they don't have standards for themselves and they don't say no. It's really hard to say no to something when you don't have standards and you haven't even thought it through. When you have, then saying no is natural. Have standards for your life. You tell your boss, I'm literally not working past 5 p.m. ever again. That's just the way it's gonna be. And the reality is if you're a good employee, the boss will quickly, readily accept that, even respect you for having those standards. And then he or she will change things to accommodate you. It's really powerful what happens when you have principles. Somebody pressures you into doing things, peer pressuring or what or guilts you or shames you. Partners even you see this all the time. But when you have principles and you say, no, that's not going to work with me. I'm not going to do that. And the answer is no. I don't really need to talk about it. Like this is, this is what I believe. This is what I feel. This is what I'm going to do. Take it or leave it. And as with most things, when you show the universe that you have standards and principles, the universe adapts to your standards and principles. What do most people try to do? They try to fit in and be fluid and try to change their principles like a chameleon based on what's going on. That's not what you want to do. Principles are something that should be truths to yourself that you never waver on. 
and then you build a life on top of them. You don't change them based on what's going on for this idea that you can kind of accommodate or do this or do that. That will always end up biting you in the ass. So the call to action for today is start thinking about what are your principles. Maybe start making a list. Start questioning everything you're doing, especially things you don't want to do. Like find out why do you do it? What's the motivation? Is it healthy? Is it not healthy? Is it useful? Is it not useful? Is it a waste of time? Is it productive? And then do a cost-benefit analysis of whether you want to do that. And then start making a list. I'm not doing this anymore. This is why. If it involves somebody else, you explain to them and you simply say, I thought about it. This doesn't bring me fulfillment. I'm not going to do it anymore. And they might try to pressure you, whatever, depending on your personality. Nobody pressures me. It's just the way it is. And if you can get to that place, it might take a while. I recommend it. When you show people that you have standards and what you say you're going to do is what you do. And when you say you believe something, that's just period. It's the end of the sentence. Like I said, the universe will accommodate to you. That's going to be it for today. Again, Colin.coach, get the AM5 newsletter. I got more of this coming out. I'm going to help you live for yourself, think for yourself, build a life based on what is, first of all, natural to the human species, right? Based on biology and an evolutionary understanding, based on what works today in our modern economic system, and then give you the tools and the mindset and the narratives and the things that you need to live a life based on these principles. I'll see you in the next one.